Okay, we're going to have a go at drawing a face. Uh, so we're going to start with a nice oval. I'm using a 4B pencil, just because hopefully it's easier for you to see. Normally, oh, there you go, HB, absolutely fine. So I'm putting in my oval and hopefully you can see that as I'm drawing it, I'm using a nice easy motion with my wrist to get those curves. Trying to keep a sense of symmetry. Don't worry about these messy lines, they'll all be cleaned up later. So that's my basic shape. You're after a nice oval, you don't want anything too round. It just will look wrong. So here's your face. If we go about halfway down, we've got our eye line. If you actually feel your own face, you can actually feel that your eyes are halfway between your chin and the very top of your head. One of the biggest problems, well, if you call it a problem, one of the biggest mistakes is when people start drawing faces, they put their eyes way too high up. It doesn't matter how nice you draw your eyes, if they're in the wrong place, they're just gonna look wrong, it does not work. So I'm just gonna mark them out with a simple line like that. Um, next thing I'm gonna do, so it's halfway, is I'm gonna mark off the nose. And again, if you feel your face, you can feel this, your nose is halfway between your eye line and your chin. It's not exact, it's just roughly. Some people have got bigger noses, some have got smaller noses, but I'm just gonna mark it off in the right position. Now for the mouth, it's the same again. It's half, it's half, and it's half. Halfway between your chin and your nose is your mouth. Already from this, you're starting to see a face take shape. Fancy word for you. Paridolia. It's when you look at plug sockets or the clouds or anything like that and you get to see a face. We've got this inbuilt recognition of faces. This is why this will look more like a face than that. I could draw that beautifully and it's still gonna look wrong because the proportions are out. So back to this one. Um, start thinking about where my eyes are gonna go. If you think about the eyes, most people do the eyes far, far too big. If you've got this big expanse of flesh, the eye is really the only thing that's slightly different. It's, it, it's got a bit more character to it. So we tend to overdo it, I know I do. Um, so I'm gonna mark it out. And if we think about it, our eyes, you've got roughly one eyes width between the two and you've got roughly one eyes width at the sides. We're trying to put in a nice oval shape. Don't worry too much about the detail just yet. We're just marking things out. Say oval arm and shape is a better description. That will do there. And for the nose. For the nose, a little demonstration over here. We've got a nice shallow U shape. And then at the end of it, we're just gonna block in the nostrils. Nice and subtle, it doesn't need much. And then you've got that little flap, that flap of flesh around the edges. And it just comes under like so. Just mark off the top like that. So that's how we're gonna do our nose. That is the right way, or a right way. That is wrong. If you go for the U, the dots, and the brackets, it just doesn't look right, does it? You've got to follow that simple guideline. So I'm gonna put it in here. needs to be a bit further out in fact but I'll worry about that later and that little bit of a line you don't need to draw much that's just going to suggest where the edge of the nose is and it then will lead on my eyebrows above uh, next thing we'll do the mouth think of it as a flattened down M shape and how big is it well it's roughly from the center of the eye to the corner of the mouth. That's where the end part will be. If you're doing a feminine face, you have thicker, bolder lips, fuller lips, more masculine, generally flatter. Not always, but generally. So we've got that basic M shape. Then 
the underside of the top lip comes in and there's a slight fleshy bit in the center not much and then just come down and around goes up slightly in the center not much just a hint but again all lips are different every face is different so it's not going to be wrong if you do it slightly differently that needs to be a wee bit thinner there but i'll tweak that as we go right that's my basic face next bit i'm going to come down and again feel your face you'll feel that at this point here you've got your temple so there's a slight subtle indent and then it comes out and that helps form our cheekbones already can you see that this side of the face is looking so much better than this one nice and subtle don't put a great big dip in we don't want a big dip just a nice indent there's one on this side as well now back to the face um, I'm putting my cheek lens from your nostrils it starts to come out and it leads your mouth we'll put in some eyebrows the eyebrows the hairs always grow out from the center to the sides your eyebrows tell you far more about your expression than your mouth does happy faces sad faces whatever it may be your eyebrows are the key to it so if i was drawing a face here already you can tell the expression from that this one here the eyebrows tell you far more than the mouth does Let's just add a few more extra details down here so we've got that little dint underneath the nose right let's look at the eyes in with a bit more detail oh before we do that let's do the ears across from the eyes and down to the nose and again feel your face you don't want to put too much detail in it's just a suggestion of where the ears are you can't see that much there we are ears done and then if we follow the ears under we're going to put our neckline in we don't want to have too thin a neck if your neck is like that it just looks too thin it's not under the mouth it's coming out from just under the ears it can be slightly wider slightly thinner but generally it's just following the jawline down and around i'm going to change this side a little bit Bring it in a little bit more. I think that looks better. And don't worry about these lines. I'll tweak it all later. Right, back onto the eyes. Uh, I'll draw one over here. When you do your eyes, I've got that almond shape. And then I'm going to put in the upper eyelid. I'll mark off a little bit of the lower eyelid. You can have a few wrinkles and just little lines around the edges as well that's absolutely fine right and now I'm going to put in the iris when we do the iris you will have the upper lid is just blocking the top so you can almost imagine that and it's got to be a nice circle if it's not a circle it will look wrong you could imagine where the upper part would be but it's just being blocked off and putting my pupil in there and I'm leaving that little flash of light that makes it look nice and shiny nice and glossy because your eyes are wet so let's keep it that way if you've got that dash over on this side that dash of light there on the opposite eye you'll do the same thing in the corner of the eye you've got that little fleshy bit that we can see so I'm just going to darken that up a wee bit when you actually do the iris If you try and color it like that it will look wrong the lines from the iris radiate out so always start the lines coming out and bring them out from the center try and keep it fairly uniform and you get slightly darker around the edge like so and because the eyes eyeballs their spheres there's going to be a little bit of shading just up on that top edge there if i'm doing a more feminine eye 
all eyes have got eyelashes, but if I'm making it more feminine, I'm now going to do that top line again. And I'm just going to put a little flick at the edges. That's how we can make a more feminine eye. Let's get some eyes in over this side. Keeping those pupils nice and central. You don't have to keep the iris as central. You can move the eyeball around, obviously. But you do need to have a sense of symmetry. So if the eyes are looking that way, keep both eyes looking that way. wrinkles a few bits of texture we might add a little bit of shading to this picture it's not just going to be a straight line drawing so what I'm going to do is under the eye I'm just going to add a few pencil lines a few strokes just to make it look a little darker and that suggests that where the eyebrow is it's then going under so you've got the shadows basically anything that goes in is darker anything that sticks out is lighter so I'm going to darken up this side of the nose. That nose could be a little bit bigger, but it's absolutely fine for now. More shading down this side. When I do my shading, I can put in an extra line here if I wish the hollow of the cheeks I'm just going to darken that up a little bit more darken that up a little bit more really soft lines when you are shading try and go in the direction of the feature that you're drawing so if you are doing a cheek follow the curve of the cheek don't start shading just like that if you're doing a cheek go around with the cheek and it's all about how hard how light we press down. Keeping it light here, because that's where the light will be coming down and catching it. Darker down here, darker under the nose. You do your lips. The best way to shade is to put in the lines either slightly, slightly diagonally or vertically rather than horizontal. Because if you look, you've actually got um, well, just lines. I don't want to say crack lines, but if you get chapped lips, you'd know what I mean. There we are. And then I'm going to put in a slightly stronger chin. And that is the basic face for now. And in a few minutes, we're going to see if we can turn this person into a historical character. Okay.